before two two months before if anyone sees someone wearing wearable protections on the street you will probably think them as this so we are going to entering a very different uh, word at the moment We started to sail through moon and stars during night, and then we discovered the fire and invented candles and oil lamps. It is after the invention of light bomb, light pollution started. In June 2016, it was estimated that one third of the world's population could no longer see the Milky Way, including 80% of Americans and 60% of Europeans. Singapore was found to be the most light polluted city in the world. Do you like to sleep with the lights on or maybe you work the overnight shift and it's hard to get a dark night's sleep? Well, listen to this. The American Medical Association now says some serious adverse health effects have been associated to artificial light at night. Yukon cancer epidemiologist and professor Richard Stevens is here to talk more about this. Good morning to you. Thank you for coming in. Oh, thank you very much. What does that tell us? Them coming out saying that this is, this is serious. It's a big policy statement. I got involved in this area about 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. I was wondering why breast cancer was so common in the modern world and it's not diet we thought it had to be diet right. but it's not so I thought it might be something about electric lighting and over the years evidence has been starting to grow this lighting does affect hormones and that's what the American Medical Association has now declared as po official policy in June and that's a big turning point for well, what we've seen over the last five years is this extraordinary increase in the number of streetlights that are being dimmed or turned off altogether. And that is because of sky-high energy prices and the huge pressure on council budgets. Look, decisions should be taken locally, but if you're walking home late at night from a, a train station and the lights have been switched off, well, would you rather walk down a street where there was no lighting or where there was lighting? And I think it's about do people feel safe when they're traveling about. Cities now produce 100 more times of light as it existed back in 50s or maybe more. Light does more than help us see. I deployed parallel investigation into triangles and studied the theory of geometry from the father of triangle, back Mr. Fuller. He demonstrates the tensegrity structure, such as tetrahedron, structured by a basic principle, which is lightweight and stable. I had made my own light pollution map based on Fuller's idea and discovered the relationship of energy, light pollution, and triangles. The shape triangle and structure tetrahedron in nature is a man-made thing. It is widely used in buildings and objects. I'm using patterns made of triangles to show the advantage of both light with structure and also the energy transfer. This diagram shows the type of light pollution based on the light source we have in our daily life. Sky glow is the main reason that we no longer be able to see the stars. Here are some examples in the history when we have needed to block light in the cities. During Second World War, there is a blackout time every day and everyone had to use flashlight when they came out during evening because the fear of the bomb. Blackout documents are proposed and blackout times are restricted. Government buildings are covered with black curtains to prevent break glasses caused by bombs and people and dogs were wearing cocoons and masks to protect from toxic light and air. I'm imagining a city where we turn off light at 10 p.m. every day.
The project involves two tests to respond to the light pollution scenario and proposed to use triangle tessellation structures to cocooning the city and its content. The structure itself would be able to respond to the light amount on the surface and open and close in different light environment. I've also deployed parallel investigation into triangles and tested different open and closed translation structure patterns and decided to use triangle uh, and tetrahedron structure because the nature of the shape. Design test one consists of cocoon for human body and dog. Human body cocoon is adaptable to the surrounding light environment when user travels in different parts of the city. The structure itself senses light amount and it can remain closed in the bright environment and start to open up and illuminate in the dark environment. When body and dog cocoon in the closed status, cocoon harness light. When the cocoon is in an open status, it emits a glow that keeps you safe when the light goes out. There are pattern packages available to purchase and everyone could be able to buy the cocoon and make it by themselves. The cocoon is made of construction materials called Tavik, which would be able to only transport moistures from one side and stop moistures from another side. Design test two consists of cocoon design for the street lights and vehicles. I expand the cocooning target from human body and dogs into the city. Street light is no longer illuminating everywhere, but in a controlled cocoon shade. The shade itself can be shortened and elongating, control the amount of light coming out. It can also bend into different directions of light up the area in the specific needs. Cocoon bus will cover the whole body of the bus. And it could also be able to prevent light come out of interior bus when it moves around the city. The structure of cocoon bus would be able to absorb light during the daytime and close and use it in the, as a power of the, uh, of the bus. And the structure would be able to close and uh, open in different light conditions as well. Here is the sections of the bus cocoon. Everything covered with cocoon is in the same material, texture, and structure where everyone has the same individual identity and outfit for the night. Light becomes more localized. Each of us carries pockets of light and going by gathering together, we can gather a large amount of light. Light becomes an interactive to, to sense our needs and help us see instead of lighting up everything and threatening our health condition. In this world, we can finally sleep tight in the dark city. Now I'm going to go through some technical studies of this project. Here is a map of London, as we can see, most of the city area was covered by light in the evening. And also with the develop, for the development of the project, I would also like to propose the cocooning structure would be able to cover the building as well as the wearable protections for the building as a potential develop uh, direction. So the light pollution scenario has been rapidly reported by the media for two reasons. Uh, First reason is um, during the evening when people are walking back home, there are safety concerns. And another part of the concern is the energy related concern where everyone think uh, they are too much light energy has been consumed in the evening. 
And on the right hand side, there is a light pollution map in EOK where we would be able to see the uh, most of the large cities in UK has been covered by a large amount of light pollution in the evening. There are three types of light pollution and uh, most of the times we've, we will be able to see orange or pink sky in the evening and this type of light pollution is called sky glow. This is the main reason that we won't be able to see the stars in the evening. Also, their government policies has been published, which is light pollution related in terms of planning and development in the city. In this project, I have tried a few pattern tests to test the stability of the structure. And the triangle is the first uh, pattern I've test. The folding process involves of mountain folding and valley folding. And the dotted area is the part where uh, the surface will be folded below the main triangle surface. And the white area is the surface will be exposed on the top of the geometry. This is a diagram showing how the geometry transforms from closed and open status. And also I've run another test with different material. This is black cardboard. Another test is the uh, square pattern test. It actually has more folding areas inside and the surface, on the, uh, the surface being left on the top is the square surface. And this is a uh, open close process of this specific pattern. And uh, another test has been done by black cardboard Pattern test three is the most complicated test, but it provides a uh, more shadow valley folding, which gives uh, the structure a thinner layer in total compared to the previous two pattern. And I've also run through the Damaxian maps when I was folding uh, origamis and um, it is no longer, it's not only a reference for triangle pattern, but also the concept as our planet is one island in one ocean. And uh, it actually brings the concern for me when uh, health related uncertainty happens in the society. It's, it is not only happening in the one country or one continent, it will influence the whole planet as a whole. So in my design test, I was actually trying different materialities of both fabric, fabric and hard materials and also paper. And I've made a composite materials of um, different compositions in order to test how good the materials are with open close uh, process. And also I've involved some uh, modern fabrication process as laser cutting to test the engraving and cutting uh, for the patterns on the Tavik surface. There are some uh, references I've been taken in the research stage of this project, especially as a material which would be able to absorb light or emit light. And this is a, uh, a material that would be able to absorb 99.9% .9 of light. And uh, the material is no, uh, not only being used in art project, but also being used in architecture project. Also, I've looked into a material that has been originally researched in a university in Singapore, which would be able to absorb light and emit light in the same material. And this material is currently being used in uh, space station designs. Also, I've looked into some uh, art project which involves the fabrication of both hard materials, hard reflective materials and uh, fabric, fabric that would be able to create a much more flexible structure to allow reflections of light. 
um, they are project also being involved with uh, looks into the energy use of nature light source in the evening. And the Full Moon Theater gives the concept of using uh, nature light source in the evening to produce a stage uh, lighting as what we normally will think of using artificial light, uh, which also gives me a very different concept of borrowing light and enhanced light with reflective surface. I've also looked into some origami folding process in terms of folding patterns and um, open and close patterns. Uh, in the next stage, I've looked into composite, composite materials and I've tried to make the pattern and fold it by myself. So this is the human scale cocoon which was proposed in uh, the presentation and I've tried to initially cut them with laser cut for 12 pieces and then sewed them together into four strips and then combine all of them together. So this is the folding process of the full cocoon and I've tried to use uh, the sewing machines in combining Tavic materials together. And the design intention for the cocoon is that it's no longer being used as a, a clothes, but also it's a, a more flexible fashion equipment which could be used as a blanket or any type of uh, forms that user prefers. Also the further direction of this project is actually looking into the details of how the triangle pattern would be able to adapt based on the shape of human body. I've looked into the motorbike suit design and uh, the potential of the cocoon project would be able to develop further in the future that could consist of different size of triangles with which uh, could be able to suit the joints of human body with the movement when we are walking on the street. Uh, in the meantime, I've also looked at some um, pattern and fabrication process which use laser cut to cut to the flat surface, but then it can be formed into a 3D object in later stage. Um, I have also tested a 3D printing with a composite material, which I've put a mesh in the middle of the 3D print and uh, the material melts by itself through the mesh and becomes a fashionable accessories. Um, also, I've looked into uh, fashion design in terms of cuckoo and how human body suits it within the fabric uh, within the fabric design environment. And this is the making process of the composite material of Tavik and MDF. I've uh, combined two material together at the beginning and used CNC to cut the pattern on top of the material. And there are two tests based on the CNC cutting. The first one is there is no gap between the triangles. And the second one is uh, leaving 1.4 millimeter gap between the triangles. And this one gives the uh, structure more space to fold when uh, they are folding together. And this is the pictures uh, shows that how materials works after the pattern has been cut at the back. Also in this project, I would like to expand uh, the knowledge of wearable protections uh, for a bigger scale. And I've looked into some um, case studies of architecture and landscape has been covered by fabric. And also some uh, soft materials has been used with the architecture. And I've looked also how architects use uses light as a design element in the building. Especially uh, in this project, I have looked into how uh, pieces can be folded from two D, uh, from a two D surface into a three D project, 
and the reference I've been looking into is the Isio Miyake's uh, folding garments, which allows um, a 2D surface can be folded into a 3D objects as a wearable garment. And as part of the project, I've also looking at how the uh, light has been transferred without using too much energy, but also could be able to be adapted as a garment in the future. There are structures uh, which is open and closed structure, but with a simple joints also being studied in the process uh, of the research stage. Um, at the end, there is a test I've done, which is using tension cables to control the geometry by itself. And I've tried um, two different type of tension cable combination. The first one is every single triangle row will be controlled by a tension cable. And the second one is every two triangle will be controlled by a tension cable. And as we can see in the picture here, uh, the first test involves more efficient control based on the geometries and the shape of open and close. And also I've worked along London to gather some light information. I've been using a app called Optical Light to obtain this kind of visa, oh, sorry, information. And I've been going through uh, London through daytime and evenings and also outdoors and indoors to gather light information. And at the end, I've proposed uh, two light maps, which shows the light amount where we could be able to see in our daily lives. And I think this is the end of the project. And if anyone has any questions, we could be able to go through them one by one. Great, thank you so much, Mi. Um, I think, um, yeah, if anyone has any questions, please do write them in the chat. Um, I think firstly, I wanted to ask, um, you kind of mentioned at the, at the beginning that no one could have imagined um, last year that we would have been walking around with masks, wearing masks. Um, mm -hmm. What kind of event do you think would have to happen for people to, I don't know, like for this kind of wearable protection that you're talking about um, to be acceptable or kind of normalized? Uh, I think first they, there is a, a, a part where we actually, when this kind of uh, pandemic happens, what we are concerning at the most is actually using the doctor's PPE to use as our daily life. And it actually brings two concerns. One is actually if everybody using doctor's PPE, then there will be a shortage in terms of the results. And another part is um, there is no current product in the market saying that uh, a daily life protection would be able to provide similar functions, but, but with different uh, design or fashionable uh, aspect being embed embedded into the design because I think there, the function of the protection is similar with doctor's PPE, but in terms of the design, we can differentiate the design of daily life's protection and also the protections for doctors. Um, because for instance, at the beginning, perhaps uh, last year, the reason why everybody doesn't wear masks on the street um, in London is because most of the times people think it's a protection for medical requirement instead of uh, daily life protection. And also, um, if we design it in a much more uh, special way, which involves fashionable uh, design elements, could be able to provide a more design variety option for people to choose as well. So it's no longer worrying for protection only, but also as this looks cool and I wanna wear it to prevent myself from a specific disease or a specific health related issues when I go outside. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the kind of research that you were doing in your final year, um, I guess was, it's like hypothetical, you're talking about something 
like light pollution is um, a problem, but the mm -hmm. solution was kind of hypothetical. But have you thought like about turning the, the research that you've been doing into kind of reworking that into a design for like PPE for the current pandemic? Or, like, I've actually been thinking of uh, doing this in terms of the general concept, for instance, uh, uh, we would be able to provide a design solution like uh, using architectural materials. Uh, for instance, Tavik, when we buy Tavik, it normally comes with a row of materials, which is like 200 meters of the row. And the material itself is like two meters long. And this kind of materials, uh, in the pandemic, there's no construction work going on. And by using these kind of materials would be able to help to reduce the demands of the medical PPEs, but also it could prevent an idea for architects to rework and think how architectural materials potentially or different type of material could provide something with similar functions. Mm -hmm. And um, I think this part uh, is very important. That's why I proposed a package design, which is uh, giving out packages and people would be able to make them by themselves. And uh, I would like to look into this kind of process in terms of uh, manufacturing a, pa a package, which is easy to assemble, but also involves some modular designs uh, that can be easily done by everyone without any further requirements for craft skills and knowledge of design. Mm 